Alexa, who is Adam Ferrara? Adam Ferrara is an American actor and comedian known for playing the roles of Chief Needles Nelson on Rescue Me, Sergeant Frank Fiorelli opposite Edie Falco on Nurse Jackie. He was a co-host on the U.S. version of Top Gear. He has had three Comedy Central specials and his new album Unconditional is Interobank's Comedy Album of the Year. He is currently launching the Adam Ferrara podcast. That sounds like it could be funny. Sounds to me like 30 minutes you'll never get back. Hi guys, and thank you for taking a chance on our podcast. We have a great first show for you. Our guest in the ADD interview is medal-winning rally driver, movie stunt driver, co-host of Top Gear, my pal, Mr. Tanner Faust. And I want to welcome everyone from our Talk To Me Tuesday family, which is a show we do on Facebook every week, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. Go to my website and click the link, and we'll be happy to see you there. And I want to welcome you to my podcast. Well, it, it's not mine. Uh, I'm not here alone. I couldn't do this alone. Human beings are not designed to be alone. No man is an island. Unless, of course, you're very large, floating in the water, and your name is Staten. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, you're not really an island. You're a landfill. <laughs> you know, but everybody needs friends, love, and support, and I am one of the luckiest guys in the world. My beautiful wife, Alex, is here with us. Hello. Hi, Alex. Uh don't say that. It's creepy. Did <laughs> well, you I just say hi, hi Alex? I said hi, Alex. You said That's it like you're name. hiding outside the bushes That's of my her house. Name. Her name is said hi, oh Alex. Oh, my she's God. A, she's a gentle woman. You said it like you want to wear her skin. <laughs> hi, Alex. Hi, Put the lotion hi, in the basket. <laughs> I was, oh. And that deeply disturbed voice you hear is my lifelong <laughs> friend, comedian, yeah. writer, a gentle woman. <laughs> yeah, I am. Phil Tag. Hi, Adam. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> oh, Hi. I don't know. How want... are you? We're meeting new people. This is the way you behave yourself? <laughs> we do. Oh, Hi, I want to introduce you to Misconception. <laughs> Fooled you. That's hysterical. And my pal and pod producer, Marcus Stein, Triple P. Hey, guys. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hi, Mark. Ugh. <laughs> This is our first podcast, and the reason I'm starting to do this, because now we all have the opportunity to do this, because I want to do this by myself. Uh, people can really know you. Th which is scary. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> he lets scary. them in on stage, though. You do. I mean, you, you talk about some personal shit on stage. Yeah, but it's still, I'll be honest with you, it's still, still a, 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 an element of performance to it. It's easier for me to be intimate with 400 people than it is in this setting. And that's me, too. I'm the same exact way. Yeah. 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 I think that's with a lot of people. You yeah. think so? Or yeah. performers in general, though. Yeah. You know, you can put a thousand in front of me, but one, I'm like, you know, yeah. get me the hell out of here. I, I'm like, don't look at me. I'm yeah. ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deaf, you know. The bells. <laughs> or what just came out of my mouth? Did yeah. that sound right? Oh, I, you know. But I think that it's, this is a really cool kind of, uh, podcasting was really cool to listen to on the road because I never felt like I was alone when I was on the road. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I never listened to the ones I was on. <laughs> I never listened to those episodes because I didn't want to hear it. I, like when I did Marin, I didn't listen to that one. I didn't listen to uh, Jimmy Pardo's. I then here's a couple of times I haven't listened. to Is it because you don't like listening to your voice or what? Yeah, I don't. I mean, even, I started doing this. I started doing interviews and I started editing them. And I was like, you find out about yourself. And I'm realizing, man, I got to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I, really got, I really should shut up. That's what great. did you tell him this time, Adam? Yeah, I got to <laughs> shut up. <laughs> What the hell is wrong with me? Do we have to move? Yeah, no, we're all right. <laughs> See, but that's a situation where you have to listen to yourself because you're you're creating a project, you're putting something yeah. together, and you're the editor. You do, mm -hmm. you're the you do everything. So mm -hmm. when you do someone else's podcast or if you do a show, you don't have to watch it. You're not obligated. Yeah, it's it's like being an uncle. You should, I, I'm a great uncle. You show up, you play with the kids. They go, ah, it's, it's time. They smell. Here, take them. Something's <laughs> wrong. Now. <laughs> There's an emotional attachment of oh, I got to do so. I'm not putting you through school. Here, take the kid. I got. Oh, down, <laughs> you know, but when you're a parent, that's because I feel like I'm a parent of this podcast, and you know, so it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I got to look out for this thing. I have to, okay, daddy. Ew. <laughs> oh, that oh. was super creepy. <laughs> oh, that. Let's, <laughs> let's go to the creepy meter. <laughs> you just <laughs> rang the bell on the creepy meter with that. You walked uh... right into that one. This is a better way to meet new people. Mm -hmm. And the way I meet new friends is by swiping left or right, trying to swipe right uh, to meet new friends. Uh, 
And now, Adam, I know you have to deal with this. Alex, I know you haven't had to deal with this mm -hmm. uh, in your life. Phil, I don't know if you have had to swim in the fetid pool of online dating. I tried it one time, um, you know, based on uh, the guy sitting to my left here, his recommendation. You should go on a dating site, is what you told me. Yes, I wanted to help you. You wanted me to go to India. Oh, no, please you, go. You please go. go to, you wanted to go to India. I'm sorry I talked you out of it. He's like, I'm on a spirit. He goes, I need, I need to find my spiritual sin. I want to go to India. Yeah. Yeah, you should go. Get off a plane. Monkeys are going to fling poo at you. It's 120 degrees. You can't eat the food, and they burn. Burn the bodies. Did you go. just say eat, pray, love? I did not. Oh. And so um, I met this girl. Um, her, her name was Michelle. And um, we went out. Was, I was living in Manhattan at the, at the time. Remember the date was beautiful. We went. We had wine. We had dinner. The conversation. Yes. I went back home. She came back to my place. There was no sex at all the first night. We made out a little bit. It was just a really, really great date. And we connected. And uh, and she loved that I was a stand-up. And, and she worked for Fox. At the, yeah. Remember, and I remember you about, called yeah. me. Well, you came home and you called me. Yeah. I was it excited. Went great. Yeah. It was excited. It went great. She's so nice. You're happy. I was so happy yes. for you. And what did you say? You said, thank you for pushing me to do this. I never said that. Yes, you did. Okay, I yes, probably did. Why do you yeah, I did. No, I did. I did. I said, <laughs> I said, thank you for, for pushing me to do this. So, the, Mark, the next day, I get an email from her. I'm like, oh, this is great. She's sending me an email because she mm -hmm. said, oh, I can't wait to see you again. And mm -hmm. we That's kissed. Awesome. And, you know, and I walked her home. And the email, it was a breakdown of the date yeah. from her. It yeah. was like nine <laughs> was pages she a long. Newscaster? I swear to Oops. God, she could have had Oprah write a forward for this email. Do you remember the email? <laughs> yes. It was so long. It was Yeah, it was divided into categories. You know, at dinner you did this wrong, you did this right, you did this what? wrong. You know, when you ordered the wine, you didn't do that. I was like, Oh my God. She yeah. was micromanaging you. And so do you remember what I wrote wow. back? I sent her but this is the email I write back, Mark. I wrote I wrote, Dear Michelle. Bye. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Yes. I remember because we started writing. You we like, did. You're like, I have to answer this. Got moment. Answer. She took the time. Yes. Yeah, I the have time. to. And I go, really? Do we have to? You go, and you went like this. No, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, Michelle. Bye. I went, perfect. <laughs> it's sent. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I sent it to my manager at the time, who was a woman. And um, she goes, oh, my God. Can I please forward this to everyone I know? Yeah. Please. I said, yeah. Just take out the names to protect the insane yeah you know? yes. oh I, man i kind of want to yeah. see the email i don't you still got it nah, nah, but what no. that, that was a weird site you were, it was on it was called dialone.com <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was just because it's just it's hard to meet people i mean it's w when you meet people in like a circumstance it's kind of easier because you can bond over the circumstance it's like me, me uh, my wife and i met on a movie we were doing together i remember mm. that and um we didn't have any scenes together, which is great because you're it, it's a heightened emotional I state. I saw you at the be. table read. Mm -hmm. Yes, you saw me at the table read, and then you threw yourself at me. And I uh, said, no, I'm a professional. Uh. <laughs> but any kind of situation, you know, you, you never want to be, you never, like, a lot of the TV shows I was on, like Rescue Me and Nurse Jackie and stuff, they were already up and running, and I was the new kid. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like being a new kid in school. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's no fun. Now, I, I had to switch schools. I went to four schools in four years because my family moved around a lot. And I'd grown up in this very small town and went to one school all the way through sixth grade. And then we moved to Connecticut because mm -hmm. I grew up in Boston. We went to Connecticut and, and I didn't know anybody. And I'm telling you, dude, it's stung. I cr I, I'm not proud, man. I wept like a baby mm. every day when my dad would drop me off. And I remember this is like the, the one tender moment that my old man had with me. He looked at me and he see tears coming down my street because I was so nervous and scared about going there. And he just gave me a handkerchief and he said, hey, kid, take this. And I looked at it and it was like Aww. snot all over it. And I was right. Like, Thanks, Bob. Because it was in his pocket for like a year. My dad had the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember the year your father, your father wouldn't do that? Carry a handkerchief in the yeah. pocket, yeah, yeah. blow his nose, put it back. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do with this, dad? Yeah. Wait, really? Thanks. Just get a Kleenex. Yeah. yeah. But it took me, it took me about a week before I felt okay. And then I made a friend. Now, did you make friends because somebody reached out to you? Or what was the circumstance where you made a friend? Um, I, th I think I was joking around with somebody in the lunch line okay. and they thought I was funny. Humor. And so that was, that's always been my mechanism to make yeah. friends is to make friends, is Humor, to make yeah. people laugh. That's how I, that's how I can contribute. That's how I fit in on the school bus. Yeah. That, even in my family, my father was always, my father was always stressed. He was working like a, like, like a dog. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a lot, but he would always work and get everything done. And when he came home, I would make him laugh. And that look on his face would go away. And I was like, oh, that's that's how I fit in. That's how I can help. Wow, that's interesting. But yeah, 
humor is uh, is the way that I fit in. Yeah, me too. It's definitely the way that I um, – because once I – especially in school, like everybody knew that I would make them laugh, mm-hmm. you know, like in school and uh, in the classroom or whatever. It bust everybody up. Right. And so – and that saved me. It did, I think, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I think – Yeah, for sure. See, th- that's the thing about your story, Mark, is you made somebody laugh. You, you made your bones in that moment where someone became friends with you. See, when we were doing Top Gear, we were all new. And for those of you who don't know, Top Gear is a, it's an automotive action adventure show. Yeah, I looked at it as life and de- or death. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the name of that show. Holy shit, I might die. Yeah. That should be the name of the yeah. show. That, that's good. Why are you doing this? Because I got a mortgage. That's what it was. <laughs> that's what the show. But the show starred myself, Rutledge Wood, and our guest in the ADD interview, Tanner Faust. And uh, there was a moment on the set that Tanner brings up in this interview I want you guys to hear um, about how we became friends. And it wasn't through humor. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. You're listening to the Adam Ferrara podcast. This is 30 minutes. You'll never get back. Who else loves summer but gets a little overwhelmed by all the plans? Daily Harvest helps me conquer the morning and kick off my day with intention through nourishing and delicious food. All delivered to your door. Daily Harvest is the easiest way to get your daily serving of sustainably sourced fruits and vegetables without the shopping, chopping, and post-cooking cleanup. Go to dailyharvest.com right now, enter promo code HARVEST, and get up to $65 off your first order. Their strawberry and peach smoothie or apple and cinnamon oat bowl are the perfect addition to my morning routine. They also have tons of options for any time of day, like flatbreads, harvest bowls, and bites. We all deserve easy mornings. Let Daily Harvest give you one less thing to worry about. So don't wait. Order your meals now at dailyharvest.com. Enter promo code HARVEST for up to $65 off your first order. That's dailyharvest.com, promo code HARVEST for up to $65 off. The Adam Farr Podcast is brought to you by Bettini Spirits. Premium crafted cocktails, 100% natural flavors, award-winning taste. And they're very good. They're very good. Mm Mm-hmm. Premium crafted cocktails ready to drink. You can get them wherever you get your booze or at BeatiniSpirits.com. We love them, and they sponsor this show. Yay. Pay attention when I'm talking to you, boy. ADHD, it's not just for kids. Nice boy, but doesn't listen to a word you say. Welcome to the ADD interview. It's not that you're not interesting, it's just that I can't focus. And my guest this week is... Oh, look, a bird. Medal-winning rally driver, movie stunt driver, my pal, Mr. Tanner Faust. You little shit, you. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, Adam. For those of you guys uh, that don't know, I was on a TV show with with Tanner called Top Gear, and we were on for, what are we, six and a half seasons? 19 years. And it was... (laughs) It, it, but it was, I think, like seventy-two episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and 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 the thing is, it was it wasn't. I think you can do seventy-two episodes as a show, right? And you know, keep your your sanity. But it was like seven hundred days of shooting. Yeah, over that six years. And it wasn't like it wasn't in a studio. We didn't have green rooms. We didn't have trailers. No, we were... no make up this and grab your tropical fruit plate. None of that. Yeah, it was out it was... in the desert, breathing. You know. Whatever feces were in the dirt of that particular parking lot, it was, I mean, it was, it was a grind. It was all fun yeah. stuff, luckily. Mm. But, man, if you look in hindsight, if you look back, it was a ton of, of time and work and good times mm-hmm. that, um, you know, it was a, and a unique opportunity probably for all of us. Yeah. For those of you who don't know the show, it's basically three idiots that like cars. Yeah. I think in hindsight now, the cool part about that show mm-hmm. Was I mean the fun factor? We we just got away with stuff. Yeah, like I it work on stuff now where you have the risk management guy there and, or gal, and it's a you know you just get cut off at the knees. Everything you want to do that's fun. There was there was no risk management. There was no safety. You were the safety guy. Our first episode, I jumped a Cadillac about forty feet in the air. Oh my god, that was awesome. And you know what the safety was? You came over. You took the seatbelt, you pulled it, put it under the headrest, and you said, you'll be all right. I figured you had a helmet on, and I didn't think you were going to go that big, to be honest. But, yeah, that was, uh, I mean, it, 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 there were a lot of sketchy moments. I mean, most of our production crew came from, was it? Um, a mental facility. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, I mean, the show that they came from was uh, Mythbusters, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so a lot of those guys just were literally racking their brains of, you know, 
different, I don't know, creative avenues they could dive into. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was, I thought the creative side, and you did a lot to go into the um, offices there and come up with different ideas. Yeah, well, you off. would show up and went, oh, that's what I'm driving? I remember. <laughs> I know. I didn't have a clue what was going on, and it was just a freaking wild ride. Yeah. Um, but it, it was awesome. And and uh, it was great that you were really involved in that. Rut was also very involved in that. But I thought the producers and you guys especially put together such fun, creative stuff to do. And that's what made the show last so long. When we, when we all took the show to think about our version of it, and I remember doing, I remember, I remember telling you guys that we got to capture the camaraderie that those guys have. Because I thought that was the element that made the show for me, the British show. Sure. Those guys were pals. Yeah. Our end of season one, we go to Alaska. And yep. with six days sleeping in the back of trucks, driving across a glacier. And I remember vividly looking at you guys saying, we're either going to find the show on this trip or we're going to kill each other. But right. we're going to have an answer in six days. And, you know, and it wasn't even necessary. It, yeah, it, ter- it turned out it worked out great. And I didn't realize that finding the show meant um, just being comfortable and being exposed essentially mm-hmm. for me that's what it was yeah like i remember on that trip i don't know if you remember there was the one scene we were doing and my daughter in laguna had just gotten bitten in the face by yeah, a dog by the dog yeah and i was on the phone and it freaked me out it was the first time and she at the time she was probably two and a half three mm-hmm. years old and it was the first time that i'd really felt like completely hogtied i couldn't get there i mean once I think we all just put guard down and stopped being in a TV show, for me anyway, that's how it was, mm-hmm. um, and just started sharing the real issues of life, which for me at the time was my daughter's face getting bitten off, mm-hmm. um, I think we all became friends then. Yeah. And and that 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 changed everything, I think. You were generally scared and worried, and I remember, mm, I haven't seen this before, because your job and your personality stuff is you're just calm under fire. Right. I mean, we, we, we had a conversation once about when the car takes you. You're talking about a Ferrari. Like, that's when you get into your alpha state. Mm. Is, it, is it 190 miles an hour coming into a turn? I remember that day like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. that was the F12. But, but yeah. to see you... Um, Just vulnerable. Yeah, you to know? see you that vulnerable and, to, and the instinct to, uh, to take care of... Uh, the instinct to help. Yeah. I think Rut and I, that's when I went, okay... And this is a good guy, and this is and 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 even having even have the expression of friendship and the expression of love and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It ain't it. It's like I remember when you remember the uh, um, the viper in the tunnel. Yes. So uh, yeah, this was this this is this is this is how a race car driver tells you he loves you. I'm I'm in a viper, and we're doing this this uh, speed run through a, a tunnel through the Continental Divide. And uh, the tires on the Viper are really wide, and you did it first in a McLaren, and you got the terrain. You said, "Look, the, it's it's you guys did a little bit of elevation." It, well, there's like grooves in the road yeah, from was, the trucks and stuff. Yeah, you did. Yeah. There's grooves in the road. It's not it's not a clean surface. We're not on a runway. Those tires are big. If something catches, you're going to get spun into the wall. Just go a hundred. Just go hundred miles an hour. That's all you got to do. Said, Which okay. is faster than anybody ever goes through there yeah the speed limit's 50 yeah you said just do 100 i said oh okay so i got in so i dumped the clutch i get in the car and you know the the in the viper if you don't know this on the tachometer when you redline it a viper comes out a red viper comes out and i like seeing that so i'm rowing the gears i'm redlining everything and i'm talking to the camera and i'm and i blow through the tunnel i come out and you heard you heard the speed, and yeah. you came up to me with this look in your eye. And went, "How fast were you going?" I said, "It was a buck forty-seven last time I looked down." And you went, "You're a fucking idiot!" <laughs> you screamed at me. He goes, "What did I tell you?" And then, as and you're standing there and, and you're yelling at me, and Rut leans into me and goes, "This means he loves you." <laughs> and, and he of was worried. It, that I mean, that was dangerous. Yeah. That was dangerous. Like it, it, you know, I feel like I did feel responsible on that show. I yeah. think to a certain degree. Well, yeah, you're a professional. Rut and I are just two idiots. It just was. There's, you know, there there are there are genuine dangers when you deal with cars mm-hmm. and stuff. And so, and do you remember the Armageddon car? Uh, yes, I do. Three of us in the same car. That was right? when, and that was a jump we all did together. Yes, you jumped. We for the, yes. the episode we had to build a car for the end of the world. So the 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 deal was we were running from we had to run from something, but we had to come down this hill. Uh, we, we came down this hill, there was a left-hand turn, and we blew through this garage. Blew, we went through the garage and then now. up a ramp and jumped another garage yes. and landed on the other garage. Yes. So 
it was it was a serious jump. And blind. Yeah, blind because we couldn't right. see it because it was it was an Armageddon, so we 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 couldn't see where we were going, and you were driving, yeah. so it was all on a screen. So it was pretty serious for a show that didn't have a budget. Right. And I remember you turning around, and I think there was. I don't know if this is is what the thought was in your head, but on your face was like, wait a minute. You guys are here with me. This isn't just, and you were like, you guys ready? And I I saw the concern for us in your face. I I, I remember vividly, I put my hand in the center and Rudd put his hand on top of mine and you actually put your hand right, three of us put our hands on top of each other. I go, all right, boys, let's dance. It's very stunts. That's very stunt moment. Yeah. Because that, like in stunts, you know, you're doing it with other stunt people, and there is a super tight camaraderie in the stunt world. Yeah. Because you're sharing the risk. Sometimes somebody's controlling your destiny a little more than others. Somebody's driving. That was you. Yeah, it was me in that case. But yeah, it's risky for everybody, mm-hmm. and that's what makes it fun, though. You push the, your your adrenaline spikes, and you you rely on each other. It's it's you know I've never been in combat, but I can only. Uh, only imagine that it's kind of a foxhole mentality. It's a fox, you know. I bet you're right. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You told me a lot about driving, and I know just enough to get me killed now. And I, I, I returned the favor, but I taught you a lot about uh, throwing craps. Well, I didn't know what throwing the bones meant. I didn't know. <laughs> hi oh, what? Where's that? <laughs> and, you'd... and uh, you know, different uh, heliopathic healing <laughs> techniques. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of stoic philosophy. A little bit of stoic philosophy. That's uh, what I was really surprised uh, when I got to know you is how much of a philosopher you are and and also learning about acting. Like mm-hmm. I you know, I you see actors everybody is like, well, geez, yeah. you know. Everybody kind of feels like acting, kind of like driving, mm-hmm. I think, where people just sort of feel like they they kind of do that in their daily lives to a certain extent, so they probably could do it professionally if they just practiced a little mm-hmm. bit. But it's hard. Acting is hard. It's not hard for you. Well, um, drive is not hard for you, right? But it, it's a it's a skill to be able to recreate something in a fresh way. And I mean, it, there's so much more depth to it than I can explain. Mm-hmm. But you said something to me one time. You're like, "Well, you know, with, with acting, you, it, it, and I'm gonna, this is a terrible terrible paraphrase, but you sort of hollow out a part of you so that you can fill it with you know whatever character mm-hmm. it is. It's some it's something to that effect, and. I still think about that. And I, you know, in this Ford versus Ferrari thing, I had to quote act. Mm-hmm. Literally, I just had to look over in a moderately somewhat happy, mm-hmm. but also slightly disgruntled way at Christian Bale as we're in a green screen finishing the, the 24 hours of Le Mans. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, it it's hard to get the exact balance yeah, and do it over and over again, and you're honestly feeding off of whoever else you're standing with. It seems like, yeah. so it's like they kind of determine a lot of it too, and it's it's a complicated thing. But so I have a ton of respect for that. Well, thanks. It's um, it's there's there's that cognitive dissonance where you got to do two things at once with with that without your voice. Yes, you know? and then what what happens when you have lines? I mean, I get as a comedian, there's yeah. hopefully you get to say what's on your mind, mm-hmm. but. You have to read lines in a lot of the stuff you do. Yeah. And I had to read lines for you, and I think we had a makeout scene that oh, that's so, was okay, yeah. really disturbing. <laughs> this is I, – I, we're shooting Top Gear, and I'm shooting Nurse Jackie at the same, same time. So I had to leave the set, and I had to shoot a love scene uh, the next day. So we finished the day. We had, we had dinner, and then I had to run my scene. So I ran, I ran a love scene with you in the hotel. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, I can tell you that you were trying so hard. You were just like you were just looking at me. You had to go. I love you. I go, okay, now you don't. Don't just <laughs> yeah. just say it. Don't feel it. Just say it. I I don't I don't know how to respond to that. It was, I mean, it's a, it's hard to memorize lines, and yeah. but then put yourself in the spot, and then put the emotion in it. Yeah, and then you know, you know, I, I it was a little awkward kissing you at first. <laughs> Um, well, union rules are no tongues. You didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. My bad. No? So I actually, we did the scene I, and I showed it to you. I go, this was the scene we rehearsed. And the first thing I did when I showed it to you, you went like this, naked! <laughs> <laughs> like a 12-year-old. Because we, we, we were in bed with the covers on. You just went, naked! <laughs> and you looked at Edie Falco and you went, is that my part? And I went, yeah, that was your part. Oh my gosh. How do you do it? How do you do it? 
You just do it, my friend. And we had to do it all with no sleep. Oh, our schedules were so tight. I was doing Nurse Jackie, you you had a full race schedule, and Rutt was doing NASCAR. Yeah. And it was always a mad dash to make a plane. Yeah, that's when the real driving starts. And Tanner always drives, and I'll tell you why. Because I would get us lost, and <laughs> Rutt would drive too slow. Yes, he would. And if and what you guys might not know about uh, this race car driver, if he's not driving, he gets car sick. It's 100% yeah. true. So we have, a, we, we have a radar detector in a minivan. We're coming down Pike's Peak after we shoot our last scene. We have to make oh a flight. God. That was funny. You're in this minivan. This thing is careening down Pike's Peak. I got altitude sickness, and I'm throwing up. Gosh, you brought back such vivid memories. I remember just looking in the left mirror and seeing your face. It was one of these Toyota minivans that had the back window, the like the big window would mm-hmm. roll down. And you're puking your guts out out of the side window around every right turn. You're like, I'll just wait for the right turns and then I'll throw up. And you, you're just puking. It's just like back the side of the van and everything. And Rutch just looking at me like, what is happening? But hurry up. <laughs> yeah. and- well, I couldn't puke on the left turns because it would come back into the van. <laughs> remember Iceland? When my truck went through the ice? Yeah. My truck goes through the ice. Oh, I'm, my gosh. I'm, that's right. I'm dangling through the ice with this 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 Chevy pickup oh is God, right God. at the balance point. The motor's pulling me down. The, that's what you're visualizing is the motor's pulling me that's down. That's it. The motor's going to pull me down. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, the, the oh, my gosh, the Icelandic guys were so calm. Yeah, they would come. Yeah. I was I was strapped in this thing. My 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 truck crushes through the ice and it's dangling between this cavern between underneath the ice. The lights a are crevasse. on. Crevasse. Yeah. yeah, but you had those you had those My weird, ass was oh in a crevasse. Gosh. You had the lights that were down on the bumper corner, so when one tire dipped in, a 44-inch mm. tire. Yeah. It's a giant tires on that truck. It went in and it lit up, apparently. I never got to see it because I couldn't get close enough. But it lit up that cavern under there, which they said was like a parking garage. Mm -hmm. They were like, okay, everybody freeze. You know, they like in the Icelandic, you know, they're like, okay, we rope to each other. Everybody freeze. I repeat, not an emergency. We just hold everybody, hold your position. And I and I can see because my lights, I've lit you up now because I'm I'm like perpendicular to you, probably, I don't know, 40 yards away. Mm -hmm. And... Your truck is lit up, leaning into this crevasse, and I see you're down there. It looks like you're like fighting with your shoe or something. I was looking for the radio. I know, I know. I see you. you come up with the radios, like slipping, like freaking, you know, whatever. <laughs> Tom and Jerry with the fish. It's like you're trying to catch the damn radio. <laughs> Finally, you get your finger on the button. You're like, not an emergency. Get your ass out here. Yeah, <laughs> really, <laughs> not an emergency. My ass. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, super calm, cool, and collected. I was like, this is why New Yorkers don't make it out to the uh, glacier very often. Yeah, yeah. I, we did a we did a lemons race. Remember we were in San Francisco? Yes, I did. So we do a lemons race, which is we all take turns driving in this race, and we're a team together. So I come into this corner, and there was an old guy in a microbus who was in front of me. And I lifted. I saw the pocket, and I was going there. But this old guy was just – and I lifted because I didn't want to wreck his car. And I was so angry at myself because I could have – I could have taken. I could have passed him, but I would have. Right. We would have rubbed. So I get back, and Rutz go, "What's the matter?" I said, "I saw the pocket. I was heading for it, but I knew I was going to catch him." And I said, "He goes, yeah, you lifted because you're not a race car driver. You don't have that killer instinct. You're a nice guy." And yeah. the ne- I look out. I go, "Tanner's a race car driver. He blocks that out. That's what he does." And as he says that, we look over, and you pit maneuvered the same I guy. Know, I know. It, it didn't. It, he didn't spin completely out, but it lifted him up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it was a Volkswagen. Right on him. cue. Tanner's <laughs> a killer behind the wheel, and the old guy's yelling. And I was like, oh, "Okay, now I get it. We're different people." Yeah. The driving <laughs> stuff was pretty easy for you. It was the emotional bonding yeah. stuff was difficult wow. for you. Yeah, exactly. But it was. I mean, the friendship I have, and look, I, look, I don't. I'll deny I said this, but the love I have for the two of you guys is is still there. Yeah. Um, one of the things I really loved about. Um, our show was the connection we had to the people that watched it. I mean, in our production office, we got a tweet from this single mother that said, um, this is the only time my 12-year-old boy and I sit down and watch TV, and I really hope that one day he gets to make a friendship like it looks like you guys have. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I'm like, I love oh. those stories. Yeah. I love those stories. Yeah, and I... Then you get the other tweets going, you drive like an idiot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. You little shit. You're listening to the Adam Ferrara Podcast. This is 30 Minutes. You'll never get back. That's my pal, Tanner. Oh, we had a lot of fun. It's great.
You did 147 miles in that tunnel? Technically, when I last looked down. So it could have been, I could have lived when I last looked down. <laughs> wow. Are, are yeah. you insane? <laughs> yeah, you're crazy, dude. Yeah, I know. Well, he, he yelled insane. at me too. Yeah. My record in the Lincoln Tunnel is nine miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I know why. <laughs> but at least it cost you $15. <laughs> is that what it is now? It's, the bridge is $15. The George Washington Bridge is 15 bucks. That's ridiculous. It's the same bridge. That's ridiculous. It's the, there's, no, there's no meal. Oh my the car's God. not washed when you're on the other side. That's ridiculous. What's the one? And you're in Jersey. Yeah. What's the one that's <laughs> underground? That's the Lincoln Tunnel. Lincoln, Lincoln Tunnel. Holland. Holland. Holland Tunnel. Remember, and the Midtown. Remember when you made me drive Pops Cadillac through that thing? Oh, yeah. <gasps> so my oh, father... My he, goodness. He had, he had I hit all those little bumpy things <laughs> with the mirror. You can't hit the so bumpy things. You can't hit the I bumpy things. I was going things. like this. <laughs> There's a big sign. Do not hit the bumpy things. <laughs> I was like, why did he do this to me? <laughs> Horrible. I had some She great. had to pick me up at LaGuardia. I had my father's caddy. I put it behind my apartment building. <laughs> with the wind? With the, and, and she had a, I said, can you drive this? She's like, sure, I can drive it. Okay. Fine. Wow. <laughs> She's driving this big ass caddy. Through the, she's hitting, the mirrors are all banged up. <laughs> she ended up rubbing some guy. There was, there was a NASCAR donut on the side because some guy's tire hit the side of it. <sighs> and she pulled, she picks me up and she's like, what's the matter? She goes, I had to give the guy money. <laughs> she <laughs> did. did. You greased the guy. I did. Listen, we don't need to get the cops involved. I did. And you paid him off. I did. Yeah. That's, I love that. That's great. And then I had to get the car fixed before my father saw it. Mike, because the mirrors are all, like, all banged all up. Banged there was up. a big tire mark on the passenger door. Hey, I... I picked you up. Yeah, a little yeah, late, I but I picked you up. She got there, right? That's it, all that matters. Yeah, she got there. See, driving's not so easy, is no. it? No. We had so much fun on Top Gear. Uh, it, it, the weirdest thing about doing that show is because if you drove home from location, you still drove like you were on the set. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, oh, the lines on the road are just a suggestion. I, I, I can go on the other side. I see that, Adam. <laughs> yeah, I, I see drive. it too. I see it with my cars <laughs> when he drives my cars. Uh -huh. Okay, there's no cameras here, Adam. We're not shooting anything. <laughs> That's, look at the speed limit exactly. sign. Look at it. Look at what it says. Obey that. He pinpoints every, oh, I can do that there, and oh I can do God. that there. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, he still no, he's no, you can't. I know, but it was, you're, you got angry at me when I picked you up in your Xterra. Got an Xterra, brand new one. Eight miles the thing had. You're like peeling out outside of Whole Foods. He's standing you're there picking me up. He's I'm like, everybody's <laughs> looking. Who the hell is that? Even me. I'm like, who the hell is that? And I go, oh, that's my truck. That's, that's mine. That's Mr. Top Gear. Evil Knievel. Oh, my God. Didn't he almost die? Yeah, almost. <laughs> Standing there, just fuming with your bags, out of seatbelt, in on. a cloud of smoke, <laughs> oh. and everyone's... everybody turned. <laughs> milk drop, almond milk is dropping out of bags. You know what I mean? <laughs> People are stepping on their kale chips. Uh, who's that? You know? <laughs> oh. Goodness, oh my God! I know, but it can be pretty cool. I was really like, you were my hero. When it started snowing. Oh, we were going up to San Francisco by the Tijon Pass. Yeah, yeah that it, scary pass. Yeah, it's a scary pass. It's snowing. It, it's it's uh, it's it was night. It was snowing pretty hard. Nobody's. No I one just knew, went. No one knew what to do. Like, we're in California, by yeah, the way. Yeah, they don't know. Yeah, oh, when it rains in California. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, what they, is that? Yeah, they freak out. <laughs> it's frogs coming from the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody <laughs> broke the seventh seal. God is angry with us. You but know, they you get panic. To, but you get to pay the highest in gas. Great. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. That's so great. everyone was stopped and didn't know what to do. And you were like, what are we going to do? I said, just hold on. And I just went on the other side of the road. I found a little I found a little traction. And I just kept going. He mm -hmm. kept going. And then all of a sudden I looked back. People were following him. He was like the leader of this like caravan. An ambulance. He was an ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. And I was like, yeah. yeah, that's my husband. Yeah, that's my husband. <laughs> I was like, all proud of you. Thank you, babe. Yeah, he took over. I like the little, that's my husband dance. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah that was, that <laughs> You was can't cool. really see it because I'm looking at it, but it was a little, that's my husband. <laughs> dance yeah that's nice so th that came in handy <laughs> mm -hmm. also we did so many disciplines of drive we did a lot of high speed stuff we did a lot of supercar stuff we did a lot of beater stuff and uh but i i think i really enjoyed the the off-roading i mean whenever we had to go camping and we had to go off-road and stuff those those were always fun for me just banging around in the woods yeah see that's great because you guys did that it was a bonding experience and you mm -hmm. guys talked about that it was sort of like a band of brothers and you guys go off into the wilderness and you come out and you guys are tighter and you could see that on the show and you guys remain friends all these years. And it's because of stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, my experience is I go on a lot of hikes here in DC 
and I don't see people bonding. I see people breaking up. I see a lot of <laughs> first time couples going out or maybe couples are a little bit in a tense spot and they think that going out on a hike is going to help them out. And this is all you get like, well, maybe you should have worn different shoes. Well, if you just want to quit, you can turn around and go back, but you'll be a quitter for the rest of your life, honey. And these people getting in massive arguments wow. on the course of the trail. And I'm like, maybe you guys should have gone to a movie or therapy or something, but the hiking trail is not for you. Wow, I don't. I think you should go find another hiking trail. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 that what, seems yeah, cursed. Mario. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Hi- yeah, where are these DC trails? I don't. Yeah. Where, where are you? Where are you, what hiking? Are you hiking on Heartbreak Ridge? <laughs> 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 didn't you have? Didn't you have a first date that wanted to go hiking? When, when did somebody bumble you and said you want to go hiking? And I was like, no, that's not going to be a good idea. We're going to go to a museum. We're going to go anywhere. You know what? We're just going to go to a nice French restaurant. How about that? Mm-hmm. Okay, but you're going to get notes after Phil did. Yeah. <laughs> I got notes once. Once I got the notes, I was done. No no more of this for me. Oh, I just see I'm I'm a I'm a believer of destiny. I am. I think when Destiny's you, a stripper in Kansas City. She is. She's really good too. And um Oh my goodness. No, I am. I'm a believer. That's why I think I never like I just I always felt like I was inflicting like my own like self-will when I would go on dating sites rather than just kicking back and, you know, you know, letting, you know, the planets align. That's and, you right. Know. You let life trample you. Good for you. <laughs> no, I do. I believe in that kind you of in, stuff. It's inflicting no, your you self-will. <laughs> what, what did you do? Catch me! <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have the steak, aren't you? Well, I just... <laughs> well, there there are happy stories in dating. Mm-hmm. I know many people met their husband, met their wife, so I don't mm-hmm. know how they do it. What's Online. happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just the world we live in. That's why... Yeah. I, I, wa- I wonder what the, what the divorce rate is, though. Yeah, I, from people who meet. I Does anybody have that information? Mm-mm. I'd like to know that information. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What's the divorce rate with these Match. dot coms hookups? Yeah, they never do that on the app. They never do you that. Know? I want to know. know. Look, look at you. Listen, before I get in here, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm like know. full blown uh, yeah, Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Where are the girls? I, I want to see the girls first. Oh I ain't goodness. signing up for nothing until I see the girls. <laughs> Look, I, I, I don't want to be out of order and, 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 and inflict my will on people, <laughs> but I want to know what's going to come in here. <laughs> Anybody see Destiny? Where's Destiny? I got a fist full of singles with her name on it. Where's oh Destiny? My God. You got to keep your heart open. You got to put yourself out there in the universe. I firmly believe if you do keep your heart open and you're out there, good things are going to come back to you. So that's why I keep I like doing it. it. I like it. See, I leave my heart open, but then there's a note in it. (laughs) 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 Work on these things. What I did wrong and right, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, (laughs) we have the summation report, Mr. (laughs) Taglaferi. That's great. But I thank you guys, and I, I thank you guys for taking a chance uh, on, on listening to our podcast. Our hearts are open. We hope you join us here, and I want to thank you guys, because I can't do this by myself. I really can't do life by myself. I'm a pretty lucky guy to have all of you guys with me. We're lucky, too. Yeah, we're lucky. Absolutely. It was so good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got to go, because I need a shower. <laughs> 